temple had been desecrated. There's another phrase that Matthew uses that was common parlance to refer to this time period, 175 years before Jesus. They called it the desolating sacrilege. So what are we going to do with this temple that's been, been defiled? Well, they had holy oil, which was meant for purification, but they didn't have very much. And the rituals required that the holy oil should be burned in the Holy of Holies for eight days to be able to rededicate the temple to God. But there was only enough oil for one day. So they lit the lamps anyway. And the story of Hanukkah is that it burned for eight days. <clears throat> Even though it was enough oil for one, it really burned for eight days. And the temple was rededicated and um, removed, the defilement was removed. And that's, and that's basically a celebration of Hanukkah. That's how we got the Feast of Hanukkah. And that's why you have the candles. It's interesting. The candelabra that you see, there's, there's always a debate, always a debate in Judaism. One of my best friend rabbis always says to me, if you have two Jews in a room, you have at least three opinions. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when it comes to interpreting scripture and the faith. The, there are two kinds of menorahs. There is the seven candelabra menorah. There is the nine candelabra menorah. The seven is you burn for seven and the eighth day is a celebration. The nine is you burn all eight for the eight days and then the ninth day is a celebration. And there's debates about how that's been used. <coughs> but, um, but the festival is, um, is like every, every religion in the Northern Hemisphere has a festival of light this time of year. I think those who came up with the religions of the Northern Hemisphere um, were affected by seasonal affective disorder, obviously. <laughs> because it gets dark on this darkest, shortest day of the year today. I mean, I actually drove by the entrance to the country club this morning because I didn't see it. <laughs> it was dark. When I get done with work tonight, I'll go home in the dark. We get tired of the dark, and so we have this festival of light. And so Monica is the festival of light. That the light of God comes even in the darkness. And it comes to a crazy, out-of-the-way place that nobody cares about anymore, Jerusalem. And you translate that to the Christian story of Christmas, and we talk about the birth of the Messiah in Bethlehem, which was even smaller than Jerusalem at the time of Jesus. It was a little, tiny town that nobody cared about. And we need to remember, as I wrap up here, that our ancient ancestors were not dumb. They were pre-technological. And their technology was words. All the tools of rhetoric and the ways that we speak and the ways that we use language were invented over 2,500 years ago. Nothing's changed. And they and our ancient ancestors knew how to use irony and satire and argument far better than we do because we're so direct with our language. So given all this history that you just heard about this festival of light of Hanukkah, now I'm going to move briefly to the story of Christmas. And listen to the beginning of the story of Christmas from Luke's Gospel that we read every year. We say that in those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus, the emperor of the whole world, that all the world need to pay its, needed to pay its taxes and be registered. And this was the first registration which was taken when Quirinius was governor of Syria. So we're going from the whole empire to a smaller place. And then we're told that Joseph went from Nazareth to Galilee down to Judea to the city of Bethlehem, the city of David, because he was the house and lineage of David. So we've gone from the whole empire to a little backwoods place that nobody cares about. And that's where we say God is revealed. In the candles of the temple that nobody cared about anymore except a handful of people who lived around it. In a little tiny town that nobody cared about anymore. This is what our Judeo-Christian history says is about Revelation. <coughs> so, for what it's worth. <coughs> questions? <coughs>